Hello, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Richeson. I am a clinical psychologist, and I'm especially glad to be here speaking to you in the month of February, because February is National Teen Dating Violence Awareness and Prevention Month. I represent Jennifer Ann's group, which is a nonprofit organization that educates to prevent teen dating violence. And this talk has been sponsored by the El Paso Independent School District in El Paso, Texas. We're very grateful to their sponsorship and their help getting the word out today. The issue of teen dating violence is often kept secret, even from those that we are closest to. Part of that reason is because we don't always know when we are in an abusive relationship. We don't always know what is healthy and unhealthy. And so we really want to understand how to distinguish a normal dating behavior from an abusive relationship. So today, I'm going to be talking to you about what teen dating violence is, what it is, how to recognize it, how to prevent it, and how to get out of an abusive relationship for yourself or how to help others to do so. Jennifer was born in Las Cruces, New Mexico and raised for a while in El Paso, Texas. She was an honor student, a hospital volunteer, and she planned to study psychology in order to help others. On February the 15th, 2006, the day after Valentine's Day, Jennifer was killed by her ex-boyfriend. She was shot from behind and her body was left in the woods to be discovered days later. Jennifer Ann's group, JAG, was formed shortly afterwards by her father, Drew Crescenti. Jennifer was his only child. The reason I decided to talk about teen dating violence and how it affects everyone is because if we look at the statistics, we all know someone who's been affected by dating violence. We all know someone who has been affected by relationship violence, but we don't always realize it. While we know that being a victim of abuse happens more often to women, it also happens to men. In the 10 years that JAG has been working to prevent dating violence, we have been contacted many times by mothers and fathers, uncles and aunts, cousins, friends, all kinds of people who love the person that has been injured. And one time in this 10 years, we were contacted by the mother of a young man, 14 years old, who was attacked and murdered by his 14-year-old girlfriend. Although girls are much more likely to be victims, to be killed or seriously injured than boys, both genders are mistreated and abused in unhealthy relationships. Teen dating violence is defined by the Centers for Disease Control, or the CDC, as physical, sexual, or psychological, emotional abuse or stalking in a dating relationship. This definition is surprising to some people because they believe that it's only physical or sexual abuse that defines an abusive relationship, and that's absolutely not true. Although physical and sexual abuse are generally much more easily identified, the effect usually is easier to see, but that's not the only form of abuse. Psychological or emotional abuse are also forms of abuse. Some people don't realize that this type of behavior is abuse, and it's much harder to explain what it is and what isn't emotional abuse. What are victims experiencing? Well, loveisrespect.org keeps statistics based on the context made to them by state. And for 2014, these are the results for Texas. There were 1,313 contacts made by Texans to Love is Abuse. The organization summarizes those contacts in this slide. And the vast majority of the contacts were basically emotional abuse. Physical abuse was second, and the third was sexual abuse. So it's important to realize that sexual abuse, by the way, is a lot more than just rape. It's being pressured to engage in behaviors that are not of the victim's choosing. Emotional abuse is sometimes called psychological or verbal abuse. All of these refer to the same general type of behavior, and this abuse doesn't leave a mark on you, but it does do severe damage. Not only is this type of behavior difficult to see and difficult to define, it is that it's much harder to recognize and admit that it's a problem when you're talking about a young person who might even be in their first relationship. How can they know what is and what isn't acceptable behavior? For example, if your new boyfriend says to you, I want to spend all my time with you, you know, that could be a very sweet sentiment. 
or it could be very controlling behavior. This one statement doesn't tell us whether it's abuse or not. We have to look at it in the context of the relationship. We have to be in the context to understand what its true meaning is and to better understand it. That's why we present warning signs of an abusive relationship rather than tell you this is or this isn't abuse. The context does matter. And the warning signs have been developed to provide you with a basis for a better understanding of acceptable behaviors. So how do young people learn what is and isn't healthy behavior? Well, ideally they will have had a healthy relationship modeling in their parents, but remember that statistics show that it's just as likely that their parents' marriage will be in trouble at one point in time, or maybe even end in divorce. Sometimes teens will look to their peers to see what is healthy, but those friends don't know any more about healthy relationships than you do. And so one of the many ways that teens are most likely to learn about relationship behavior is through the media. Well, that's not healthy at all. The very popular Twilight movies display a really dysfunctional relationship between the two lead characters, Edward and Bella. If you look at it closely, you'll see that Bella has an issue with self-esteem. She doesn't feel good about herself, so probably on some level more willing to put up with a lot more than what absolutely would be healthy to do so. Edward is, very, is controlling, and he's very controlling in the context of being very jealous. Unfortunately, Bella then may assume that that has a lot to do with how he cares about her. He's so jealous, he wants to know where she is, who she's with, to be with him at all times. He keeps her from other people, and while she may not think of that as abuse or controlling, it certainly is and it's dysfunctional. In fact, we could use the relationship between Edward and Bella as an example of what not to do in a healthy relationship. We believe that it's important to provide guidelines for what is and isn't acceptable behavior in a healthy relationship. And that's why we've offered all of our educational resources. For example, there are 10 signs of an abusive relationship that are printed on our cards, and the cards can be downloaded and printed from our website. The back of the cards have suggestions about safety and the way to get out of an unhealthy relationship. And finally, there is a toll-free number that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, in English and in Spanish. So this is available to anyone at all times. These are the bookmarks that we offer from Jennifer Ann's group. We've also produced these. And the statistic, 44% of all students having been in an abusive relationship by the time that they graduate from college speaks for itself. If you don't have access to these bookmarks, you can request them from us or you can print them out from our website. The bookmarks have tons of useful information about spelling and math formula, and they're designed to be used also as a ruler all in addition to the warning signs of an unhealthy relationship. The 24-hour helpline is also on the bookmarks, and we designed these bookmarks to be very useful, to be something that people want to keep, they want to keep as a resource, not just for the dating issues, but for all of the usefulness that they have, because we really want you to keep them. We want you to keep them so that you can have a constant reminder of what is and isn't healthy, so that you have an opportunity to have that close at hand, to help yourself or to help somebody else. Too frequently, we hear about violence on a school campus. Well, the cases we hear about are typically those that involve groups of victims. But there is a victim case, uh, victimization that does occur actually more often than those things, and that's the victimization occurring more frequently, which is one-on-one -on -one abuse, relationship abuse. Increases the likelihood in, in these abusive relationships, increase the likelihood of school dropouts, drug abuse, self-harm, and even becoming pregnant. Importantly, teenagers in an abusive relationship are much more likely to become adults in abusive relationships. The issue of intimate partner violence, or commonly known as domestic violence, has an enormous impact on people throughout the country. In fact, domestic violence costs our country over $8 billion every single year. This is just one of the very important reasons that you need to learn about healthy relationships that you don't become an adult in an unhealthy relationship. This is not just about teenagers who are affected by dating violence. One in four preteens or tweens, that younger group of people, uh, basically say that dating violence or physical harm and hurting relationship partners is a serious problem for people in their age group. 
Additionally, more than a third agree that verbal abuse is a serious problem for them. And only half of the tweens claim to know the warning signs of a bad or hurtful dating relationship. Slightly more said that they would know what to do if a friend came to them for health. Help. When you look at the difference between the teens and the tweens, there is an increase in awareness for teens, but not necessarily an increase in awareness of what to do to help. Every state has protective laws that are there to protect you from relationship violence. The Violence Against Women's Act, or VAWA, of 1994 was drafted by the then Senator Joe Biden, but signed into law by President Clinton. It has been renewed by every single president since that time. So this issue has been not only important, it's been identified and it continues to be kept in the forefront of our awareness, which is wonderful because that is the mode toward and the movement toward prevention. Teen dating violence is prevalent across the country, but the laws to educate students about the issue and legal protection available varies drastically from state to state. This has only gained attention in the last nine to 10 years. This map from Love is Not Abuse displays the progress of dating abuse education laws in all 50 states. The dark green states have the strongest laws on teen dating violence education in schools. The blue states have passed some form of legislation and the gray states unfortunately have no legislation currently in place. Texas is one of the states that has important legislation to educate its student about dating violence. But limitations in the rules make Texas program less than ideal. But Texas still has been a role model for some of the other states that have enacted their laws. Most of the legislative changes were spearheaded by those groups or individuals that have experienced loss. Jennifer Ann's group was actively involved in the testimony to support the changes made in Texas. And there is a law on the books called Jennifer's Law, which allows a graduating high school student in good standing to receive their diploma posthumously. There are twice as many teen victims of violence and sexual assault than adult victims. Texting has increased rapidly in recent years from an average of 50 texts per day to the average teen sending more than 3,329 texts per month, which is more than six texts per waking hour. Female teens send more texts than male teens, but for both genders, the numbers continue to climb. Other age groups don't even come close. Texting is more important means of communication than ever. In the past, the cell phone was looked at as an issue for safety, Parents wanted you to have a phone so that there was an issue of connection and you could kind of make sure that your team was safe or that anybody was safe. You could communicate needs, safety issues. But now it's really more important for most people to stay in touch, to communicate. So the interest in safety has taken a back step to the issue of communication. But remember, if you receive 30 texts in an hour that you want to receive, that's one thing. But what if you receive 30 texts in an hour that you don't want? That's abuse, and it's not OK. So you have to know that if somebody is texting you and asking you, where are you, who are you with, and uh, what are you doing, that's just not OK. Another technology issue is passwords. Unfortunately, people who are dating sometimes demand the password to Facebook accounts or email accounts so they can check up on their boyfriend or girlfriend. And although you hopefully already know this, that is not okay. It's not even a little bit okay. If nothing else, you give your email password to your girlfriend, and although she never uses it because she knows that that's not what people in healthy relationships do, a month later, you find out that somebody has changed your password and is now sp spamming your entire contact list. You've never given your password to anybody else, so in the back of your mind, you figure that's probably what your girlfriend did. Of course, the reality is that you fell for a phishing attempt, but now your poor girlfriend has been to blame. Before social media, rumors had an end. Today, information or pictures posted can go on without end and unposting which really isn't even a thing. It doesn't work. There is absolutely no way to undo something once it's made online. More than one in four stalking victims reported some form of cyber stalking that was used. I've spoken with teens who were so upset 
that they didn't want to return to school because of photos or texts that went viral, especially after a breakup. There are over 200 million active users of social media in the United States, or approximately 73% of our entire population. So knowing when you friend someone, you may not even be sure who you're friending. And remember, when you friend a friend, the vulnerability goes up even more. The bottom line is that if you don't want your parents or other people to see who you're communicating or what you're saying, best not to do it. This isn't a question of morality. It isn't a question of right or wrong. It's a question of common sense. Remember that if you share something embarrassing with a person who wants to control you, there's a real good chance they're going to use it to do exactly that. And if you don't care if others see a picture, then it can't be used as blackmail. It's important to educate yourself, to understand what is, what isn't acceptable in a relationship, it's important to understand the reality of dating abuse and to have a safety plan in place before you ever should need it. Think about fire drills. If you wait until there's a fire, you have a fire drill that kind of defeats the purpose of a drill, right? The same thing here. Make sure that you have memorized some important phone numbers, that you know where you can escape to a safe place in the event that you need to do so quickly, and have a word or a phrase that you can share with your parents in the event that you need help. Remember, this is just like a fire drill. Preparing yourself for something to happen doesn't mean it's going to happen. It means that you know what to do if it does. To stay safe, that's the goal. Schools have come a long way in their interest of this issue, and they've begun educating their students about dating violence. They have policies in place to keep you safe. Everybody's working together on this issue, but we need you to get involved. And that also reminds me that you can't just be a bystander that you've got to be able to step out and step up. It's not just for you, but if you see a friend or someone that you know at school or someplace else that's having a problem, please step in. Don't wait for someone else to do it. Everyone seems to assume that the other person is going to do that, and it might not be so. There are horrible, tragic stories about people assuming, well, everyone is there as a bystander, and they watch tragedies unfold right in front of their eyes and have failed to do something. Please be ready to act. There is a free app and one of several that are designed to keep you safe. This one was out of uh, a, a contest that was held by the White House and it was spearheaded by uh, Vice President Joe Biden who's very interested in this issue. And basically with just two touches, this particular app called Circle of Six sends out six contacts, sends information to six contests simultaneously, which also includes your location and that you may need some help. This can also add uh, like a 911 call on there, a campus police number on there, whatever you need. It could be a friend, it could be your family, but this way people know immediately that you need help and where you are. So think about using this app. It was designed for college students, but I find that it's useful for anyone. And actually, I have it on my phone. Jennifer Ann's group holds an annual video game contest in which $10,000 worth of prize money is offered for award-winning games that teach the warning signs of an abusive relationship in a non-violent way. Those that have been submitted, who have submitted those games, represent many, many different countries. This is something that has become popular around the world. The award-winning games are posted for free play on our website and are played millions of times every single year. One winning entry in the Love Love Life Love Game Design Challenge designed and developed by HEMA is the first game from the annual video game design challenge to be made available on a portable mobile platform. Currently, Grace's Diary is a free app for Android from Amazon. In the game Grace's Diary, you play the part of Grace who's concerned about her friend Natalie, whose behavior has changed since she started dating her current boyfriend. Grace wants to call Natalie and talk to her about her concerns, but knows that Natalie won't listen to her unless she has sufficient information to support those concerns. You investigate Grace's room to unearth memories and information in order to make that important call to Natalie. Only if you find sufficient information and make proper choices will you have a successful conversation with your friend. Here's a sampling of some of our games. Grace's Diary, the game I just described to you, is a point-and-click game from Thailand. 
The Guardian, it's a flappy bird type of game from Argentina. And what I really like about this game, if you play it real time when it's dark outside, the game has a dark background. And if you're playing it during the day, it has a light background. So it really is a little more interactive and it makes you feel like you're right there with the Guardian. Another chance is an 8-bit RPG style game from Belgium. And remember, all of these games are available for free prey on our website. And if you play them, you're going to be learning while you're playing them more of the warning signs and the ways to stay safe. Remember, it is never OK for someone to hit you or to be cruel to you. You might think uh, alcohol or drugs or even a bad day makes a partner abuse to be understood. But you know what? It is never OK, and it's never excusable. It's not your fault. And you really aren't responsible for what other people do. You can't control how a partner acts and cannot make them mistreat you. Remember, if you hit an abuser, that you are responsible and you can get help to stop that behavior. You can talk to a parent. You can talk to a counselor or a nurse or a psychologist or simply call an anonymous helpline. Remember, you are not alone. More than 600,000 of our educational cards and bookmarks have been distributed for free by Jennifer Ann's group. Our Speaker Bureau has given hundreds of lectures across the United States and in Europe. While our cards were designed for teens, they're equally well received by tweens and by adults. The bookmark for college students have been designed with the same warning signs, and while adding the most misspelled words and formula to ensure their value in keeping with these bookmarks, more resources include printable resources, infographics, and of course, the free award-winning video games. You're not alone. Help is available every day for everyone in every way. Please share this critical information with your friends, with your family, and remember it for yourself, because again, the goal is to stay safe. It is important to remember that this is not just about stories. This is not about statistics. These are about real people. These are about tragedies. These are about things that can be prevented, and that's where your help comes in. This is not just about those we've heard about in the news, about uh, Lindsay and Burke from Rhode Island, about Yardley Love, who was a lacrosse player at the University of Virginia, about Otrella Mosley, 15 years old, and Jennifer Ann Crescenti, 18, both from Austin, Texas high schools. This is about people that we have lost and people that we really want to learn from so that this doesn't happen to another family. It's about real people. As I said, it's about real stories, about real tragedies. Jennifer Ann was my granddaughter. Thank you.